in this video some uh, information about the experiments that I did this evening. <coughs> I wanted to try at first to make a kind of say Christmas gadget by say uh, taking a piece of cardboard here, uh, gluing a magnet to it and then mounting a um, coil, this coil by the way, directly to it and then say driving that coil via a a stable multi vibrator with say one second, uh, one second time or two seconds so that this magnet started to move. That was the aim of my experiment, but it did not succeed, at least it did not succeed perfectly. It worked, surely. This is the multi vibrator that I made. It was connected to this coil and I had really some quite a good movement, but my next idea was that when you make a balance oscillator uh, the coil here changes its magnetic field so that it attracts and pushes the magnet in, into certain positions. So that was the next idea and this is the first step in developing this idea. I made a balance oscillator though I found out that uh, uh, up until now it worked only on a very high frequency anyway. The balance oscillator is by the way and here you see the schematic a kind of circuit that always works more or less always works. Uh, on higher frequencies you can use here only one transistor and with higher I mean uh, higher uh, approximately higher than to uh, sorry say 8 megahertz. But in this case I've used a Darlington and I've done that by purpose because a Darlington gives such an extremely high amplification, of course with the risk of deterioration. Anyway, uh, the properties of a Darlington in this case are, uh, say, much better compared to a single transistor. So that's the first tip, use a Darlington. Uh, and this is not correct, of course. Here I say, don't have a. That's not good. Don't have a. Don't have enough uh, amplification. That's important. You can use a driver circuit. You can make it with a small signal transistor and a power transistor, often uh, say a BD139 and a 2N3055 or a BC547 and a BD139. That are, as far as I could see, uh, more or less ideal drivers. And here that circuit again, the frequency of course depends in fact on all the factors in the circuit, the current, uh, the voltage, um, the inductance of the coil, the windings of the coil, etc. etc. But uh, apart from all these say kinds of electronic problems, um, oh, <coughs> sorry, often such a circuit especially the balance oscillator uh, works almost always. And I don't know why, 
Perhaps it's strange, but I made many of them and they work. Also on say 16 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz with of, coil, of course a coil that is tuned to that specific frequency anyway. And perhaps you can get it working on very low frequencies, say uh, 500 hertz, 100 hertz. And in that case, of course, the transformer must match in its frequency to the driver transistors and the Darlingtons. In this case, we have a coil that works on approximately 2.7 megahertz. And it's important to tell that the voltage of such an oscillator is very critical regarding a oscillation or no oscillation. Now I'm working on 1.7 volts. The current is almost uh, not visible. But I'm going to change now uh, the supply voltage. And here there is a very, very critical moment where it works or does not work. Now it doesn't work and I'm almost sure, I know why, because there we have here, I had here a connection to the signal tracer and that signal tracer damps as an effect on the output frequency. Anyway, I've removed it now and we see here a kind of uh, waveform and now it's on 3.3 volts and it's on 3.3 Nine. So I go back now to a lower voltage and we see a kind of stabilizing. This is a burst by the way, so the oscillator oscillates but also swings out here and then starts again on 1.2 megahertz. Uh, it has all to do in this case with two capacitors that I soldered in experimentally here and here. And I'm now going to take this capacitor, it's 0.22 microfarad, out. And after that I'm going to take this 0.22 microfarad out. Circuit again. And let's see what happens. I take that cap out now. And now we see a good waveform. Quite good. And we read 28, perhaps it's 28 kilohertz. That could be. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, could be 28 kilohertz. And now I take this capacitor out. And again we are on, say, 28 kilohertz and we have a quite good waveform. That's that's surely not bad, given, say, the not ideal properties of this coil. A steel pin with 80 windings and 80 windings and a tap in between. Um, I forgot to tell that I have, say, mounted over parallel over the coil also a 0.22 microfarad capacitor 
that's responsible for the frequency for a big part, part from the core and the core material. So let me take it out too. Hope it can succeed. I need a better scissor. Put on my camera for a while. Take out the capacitor. So now it's taken out. We only have the coil here without anything. So no capacitor here, no capacitor here, and no capacitor here. And this is a waveform, and we are now on 68 kilohertz. That's very interesting. The waveform also change changes. And I've done that experiment earlier. So I can tell that this is a reliable waveform when all the caps are taken are taken out of this circuit. So that was more or less all to tell. I can show now the say the sensibility of the circuit to the voltage is now 1.4 volts. Current is not visible. I change the voltage now, and suddenly the whole oscillation stops. Turn back the voltage now, and here it is. Suddenly it is here again, and there's a very, very critical voltage range band where the circuit works. But I can assure you that with, say, a ferrite rod here, that's not very critical because uh, such a ferrite rod as a core has a very high quality factor. So there's much more quality, quality and there will surely be a bigger frequency band when you change the supply voltage between say 0.5 volts and say uh, 6 volts or so. And also when you use here a real transformer made for 50 Hz or 60 Hz and use here suitable transistors, power transistors for instance, and get the circuit into working. Um, you will also see other waveforms. That's absolutely sure. But uh, on the other hand, sometimes the waveform uh, is not extremely important, uh, especially with loads that say have a ohms resistance. Say a um, lamp with a filament or so. And that's also the reason why you find on YouTube all kinds of these circuits. And in general these circuits uh, don't work on a stable frequency and are only suitable for say loads that are ohms. And I've had many questions about it. And the only thing I can say is <coughs> when you want an inverter that inverts uh, changes 12 volts or 24 volts to 110 volts AC 50 Hz or 60 Hz by such a simple inverter. It's almost impossible to make it um, in a reliable way. And then I mean that such an inverter uh, can work for um, uh, circuits, devices that really need a pure sine wave. So that was a kind of side pass 
this is a circuit that works. And uh, I wish you luck.